Hello dear students, this is your physics teacher Ashish Sharma and this is lecture 18. In last lecture we just finished the derivations of our second unit. In this I am going to discuss a couple of numericals based on an angular projectile. The first numerical is find the minimum velocity with which the horizontal range is 39.2 meter. So 39.2 meter is the range required and we know that formula range is maximum at theta is equal to 45 degree. And formula of range is r is equal to u square sine 2 theta divided by g. Comparing range with 39.2 meters and uh, putting the value of theta 45 degree, 2 theta will become 90 and sine 90 is equal to 1. So we can easily calculate u 19.6 meter per second. Hence minimum 19.6 meter velocity is required for covering a range of 39.2 meter. Look at another question. A projectile has same range r when the maximum height attained by it is either h1 or h2. Find the relation between r, h1 and h2. We studied about same range at two different uh, angles. The relation between angle is that they must be theta and 90 minus theta. Applying the knowledge of same concept, can let us consider h1 is equal to u square sin square theta and h2 is equal to u square sin square 90 minus theta divided by 2g sin 90 minus theta is cos theta so i can also write h2 as u square cos square theta divided by 2g multiplying h1 and h2 together it will become u raised to power 4 divided by 4g square into sin square theta cos square theta now if i will multiply numerator by 4 and divide numerator by 4 then this numerator 4 will become 16 and the 4 with, with which i multiplied in numerator i had taken the square root of it because I take the content in the square of whole bracket square bracket so this sine square theta cos square theta can be written as sine theta cos theta u4 will become u square and 4 by which I multiplied becomes 2 and g square will become g because if uh, you will put the power it will become the same equation why I am doing so because I know that 2 sine theta cos theta is sine 2 theta and u square sine 2 theta by g is the formula of range so my h1 h2 becomes r square by 16 or i can say r is equal to root 16 h1 h2 or r is equal to 4 times root h1 h2 that is the relation between range h1 and h2 moving ahead let us start our third units first chapter 3a laws of motion you already have studied about laws of motion in class 9th so it is going to be a quick uh, catch up for you it will not take much of your time reviving your concepts of force so what is force defining force force is an external push or pull which changes the state of motion or shape of an object or try to do so so force आप लोगों ने पढ़ा है कि when we apply force हम किसी object को motion में ला सकते हैं उसको push करके उसका acceleration provide कर सकते हैं उसकी velocity increase कर सकते हैं हम force से किसी चीज को रोक सकते हैं उसके अंदर retardation create कर सकते हैं velocity decrease कर सकते हैं with force we can change the shape of a body and try to do so why try to do so term is added here because if you try to move some heavy furniture or if you will push the wall and you are not able to move it then uh, what does it mean that you are not applying force no you are applying force so that is uh, why uh, try to do so term is added in this definition if you change the state of a body rest to motion motion to rest or uh, increase its speed or you change the shape you are always applying the force the next uh, thing is uh, inertia. Inertia is the tendency of a mass to oppose the change in state of motion, rest or uh, direction. So if you are having a heavy object which is in motion, we all know that it requires great amount of force to stop it even if uh, friction is there or friction is not present. A force is required to stop it. If friction is there then friction will provide that force otherwise you have to apply that force and uh, if you want to move some heavy object again you have to apply force so that acceleration can be created so inertia is simply uh, saying that 
any object don't want to change its state of motion if it is in rest it wants to continue in rest and as it wants to continue in rest it becomes inertia of rest if something is in motion state of motion it wants to be in state of motion and that is known as inertia of motion and similarly if uh, something is moving in a particular direction and you try to change the direction again force is required because a body which is maintaining a particular direction don't want to change the di uh, direction that is known as inertia of direction आपने ये एग्जाम्पल देखा होगा एक कि अगर हम एक पत्थर को एक धागे से बांध कर गोल सर्कल में घुमाएं लेट मी शो यू द स्टोन विद ब्लू कलर एंड दिस इज़ द सेंटर अट स्ट्रिंग इज टाइड एंड यू आर मूविंग द स्टोन इन सर्कल एंड सपोज एट दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट पी इफ यू विल कट द ब्रेक द रोप देन वट विल हैपन द इंस्टिड ऑफ गोइंग ऑन सर्कुलर पाथ नाउ योर स्टोन विल गो स्ट्रेट because the change in direction was continuously provided by a force which was towards center centripetal force which we just have studied in last unit if that force is not there the object will continue to move in tangential direction that is known as in, uh, inertia of direction now what is newton's first law of motion newton first law of motion states that if an object is in rest it will continue to be in rest or if an object is in motion it will continue to be in state of motion until unless any external force is applied on it so newton first law is simply uh, defining inertia and it is saying that it is a, a force is required for changing the state of motion of a body for change and that is because of inertia of body if body is at rest for changing its to motion its state we need to break the inertia of rest and force is to be applied so first law is quite theoretical and for understanding second law which is your mathematical equation we first need to understand what is linear momentum linear momentum is defined as the total quantity of motion in an object and uh, mathematically it is defined as product of mass and velocity so its unit becomes kilogram meter per second and the dimensional formula is mlt minus 1 and it is a vector quantity please note that momentum is a vector quantity so what is newton's second law of motion newton's second law of motion in its brief and crisp state defined as rate of change of linear momentum is equal to external force applied that's it so f is equal to dp by dt and for some constant force we can also write like f is equal to p2 minus p1 divided by t2 minus t1 let us have a little detailing of this second law of motion so force is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum by newton second law of motion but uh, in si system the constant of proportionality is equal to 1 hence we can also say that f is equal to dp by dt also p is equal to mv if i put mv in place of p m is constant can be taken out of the differentiation and it becomes f is equal to m into dv by dt we know that dv by dt is equal to acceleration again putting back in the equation f is equal to ma so f is equal to ma or f is equal to dp by dt both defines same law that is known as newton's second law of motion it gives us relation between force mass and acceleration si unit of force is newton and dimensional formula of force is mlt minus 2 let us have a look uh, at a numerical a constant force acting on a body of mass 3 kg changes its speed from 2 meter per second to 3.5 meter per second in 25 second the direction of motion of body remains unchanged calculate the magnitude and direction of the force as the body is accelerated we can calculate the acceleration first change in velocity v2 minus v1 divided by time 3.5 minus 2 3 by 2 divided by 25 3 by 50 meter per second square and by newton second law of motion f is equal to ma hence 3 into 3 by 50 that is 0.18 newton is the answer as uh, you can observe that speed is increasing so force must be applied in the direction of motion so dear students go through this chapter and uh, try few numericals also in your homework part do problems for practice from pradeep's book do them uh, first by your own and if you get stuck you can also have a look at the hint 
i am sure if you have uh, studied my lectures properly um, it will be minimum chance that you will get stuck in your pro problems still uh, we can also have live classes online classes session you can have your doubts uh, which is we are going to have on thursday so till then take care and study well thank you